By now it should come as no surprise that we love garlic. It's easy to grow, it's easy to prepare, and it's easy to preserve. But if only there was an easier way to peel it. Sure, we've mentioned smashing the cloves with a knife when you only need a few, and shaking them in a pot when you need quite a few, but what if your recipe calls for quite a few more? Well, you could just spend several extra minutes shaking the pot, or you could instead spend several hours making a drill-powered machine to do the shaking for you. Obvious choice, right? But before we get started, if it's not already apparent, this project was mostly just for fun. But it does work. And besides, the garden's still buried in snow anyway, and my little workshop is nice and warm, so let's do this. Now, this idea first occurred to me while shaking the pot for what felt like the hundredth time in preparation for making our garlic powder. You see, I realized that this seemed like a perfect job for one of those paint can shakers down at the local hardware store. I figured if those machines can mix a gallon of paint in minutes, then they'd probably peel a whole crop of garlic in seconds. So later that evening, I checked online to see how much one would cost, and quickly decided that ugh, I could make one way cheaper. But no sense in completely reinventing the wheel, so let's see if anyone else has tried to make a DIY paint can shaker first. And the internet being the internet, of course they had. One popular method is to simply attach a small clamp to a jigsaw, add a can of spray paint, and turn it on. So I decided to give it a shot, because it looked easy and would only require a few minor adjustments for our garlic peeling purposes. First, I put the cloves in a tall mason jar. I know from the pot method that the best results come from a larger container, because it gives the cloves enough room to build up some momentum. That's what provides the necessary force to split open the peels and shake them free. Plus, a mason jar is cheap, easy to clean, and it's see-through, so that we can tell if the garlic is done without having to take everything apart. Next, instead of a clamp, I decided to drill a hole in the center of the lid, insert a long bolt, and secure it with a nut. Then, by adding a second lid, I was able to create a solid rod for connecting it to the jigsaw, while also keeping the garlic sanitary. It took a little convincing to attach the other end of the bolt to the blade clamp, but within a few minutes, I was ready to toss in some garlic and give it a test run. Initially, I was pretty impressed with my invention. It certainly shook the crap out of the garlic, which was the main criteria for this project. But unfortunately, with all that force, it also quickly tore apart the thin metal lid. So I tried adding a large washer and inserting another lid as reinforcements, but alas, the results were essentially the same. Plus, another thing that each of my attempts had in common was the fact that the garlic peels remained mostly intact. Huh. At first, this left me scratching my head, because the jar was just as tall as the pot and the jigsaw shook way faster than I ever could, so what gives? Well, after a few more experiments, I eventually came to the conclusion that the problem was not the speed of the shake, but rather the distance. You see, when I shake the pot by hand, the distance traveled is roughly 8 or 9 inches, but when I use the jigsaw, it's only about an inch and a half. And there's a bunch of math that proves why that matters, but I think the following demonstration will suffice. Try dropping a marble or a bead inside a jar and shaking it slowly but with a bit of distance. Notice that the bead easily rolls from one side to the other and produces a satisfying thunk as it bounces back and forth. Now try again with the same speed, but this time with a distance of only an inch or two. Notice that the bead is far less likely to reach the other side. Even if you increase the speed, the results are pretty much the same, and when we look closely, we can clearly see that that is what is happening with the garlic as well. Essentially, the distance traveled makes all the difference between a violent shake and a gentle vibration. So we need our machine to shake the jar farther. But how can you increase the distance traveled by a jigsaw? Well, at first, it may seem like simply adding a longer bolt would do the trick, but as you can see, it doesn't. Instead, what we need is a simple lever, or lever, depending on where you're from. You see, we're used to thinking of a lever when we want to move a heavy object a short distance, but by simply flipping it around, we can use the very same lever to move a light object a far distance. So by applying this principle, we could easily create a basic linkage that would amplify the distance traveled by the jigsaw. But unfortunately, to get the kind of distance we require, our lever would have to be about 20 inches long. And besides, if we're going to go to that kind of trouble anyway, then maybe we should just back up a bit and start with a power source that's a little bit more universal, such as an electric motor 
in the form of a regular old cordless drill. Because most people have a drill laying around anyway, and the chuck is far easier to work with than the jigsaw's blade clamp. So now we just have to convert the drill's rotational motion into linear motion. But luckily, that's a heck of a lot easier than it sounds. All we need is what's called a slider crank mechanism. A slider crank has three basic parts. A crank, the part that spins, a slider that moves back and forth on a fixed path, and a connecting rod that joins the two together. During the first half of the crank's rotation, it pulls the slider toward it, and during the second half, it pushes it away. Now just put it on loop and speed it up a bit, and voila, we've got ourselves a shaker. And conveniently, since the distance is what we're most interested in, this mechanism also happens to be governed by a handy ratio. The length of the slide is always twice the length of the crank. So if we want an 8-inch slide, then we need a 4-inch crank. No other math required. Okay, so now that we know how this mechanism works, let's try to make one. For this project, I started with a piece of flat aluminum, which you can pick up at most hardware stores. They're inexpensive, easy to work with, and can be cut to any length. We'll be using this to make both the crank and the connecting rod. Next, we'll use an 8-inch cupboard drawer slider as the, well, slider, some nuts and bolts to hold it all together, some scrap wood for a frame, a long carriage bolt as a drive shaft, and, of course, a cordless drill. I started out by cutting the aluminum down to size. As I mentioned, the crank should be about 4 inches, or half the 8-inch slider, and the connecting rod needs to be long enough so that it extends all the way to the slider when the crank is in its fully retracted position. In my case, that was about 10 inches. Next, I drilled some holes in each of the ends and used a nut and bolt to connect the two. The trick here is to tighten it enough that they stay together, but still loose enough that they can move freely. I also used additional nuts as spacers to ensure that there was enough clearance. That'll make more sense in a moment when we attach the drive shaft. And I should also note that while the nut and bolt joint will be perfectly acceptable for our prototype, I'd probably use some sort of bearing in a more permanent solution. All right, now let's connect it to the drive shaft. I chose a large carriage bolt because it fits nicely in the drill's chuck, and because it has this square section on the shank, followed by a flared head. This is what we'll use to grip it onto the crank. To do that, I used a small file to shape the hole at the end of the crank into a square. Luckily, the aluminum is fairly soft, so this was pretty easy. Now the drive shaft and crank lock together, so even if this nut were to come loose, they'd still turn as a single unit. Next, I used the scrap wood to add a simple jar holder to the drawer slider and screwed on another piece of aluminum as an extension. Then after bolting it to the connecting rod, the basic mechanism was complete. So finally, I used some more scrap wood to construct a simple frame, some metal strapping to secure the jar in place, and now I think we're ready for a test run. To operate the machine, simply add some garlic cloves to the jar, Screw the lid on tight, and pull the trigger. It's probably best to start out slow, but once you're confident that it's all going to stay together, let her rip. In each of my tests, all of the cloves peeled within several seconds, without any difficulty. So next, I decided to try with a whole head of garlic to see if the shaker could both break it apart and peel it all in one go. And you bet it could. So I'd say this experiment was a resounding success. And that, my friends, is how you can save several minutes in the kitchen by spending several hours in the workshop. You're welcome. All that's left now is to give these a quick rinse and then they'll be ready to use. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon.